tutorial we're going to have a look at how to mix custom colours. Spectrum Aqua Markers, because they're a water-based dye product, give you the possibility to not only use the colours as if we've given you them in the pen, but to mix your own colours, which opens up a wealth of different opportunities and different colours, gives you infinite colour options. So what we've done is given you really fabulous base colours, but then the ability by mixing them together, as you can with all uh, water-based products, create new colours for specifically for your project. So you never find yourself wanting or lacking a particular colour because you have the ability to mix your own. It's a little bit being like a scientist. It's incredibly good fun. I can spend a happy couple of hours just trying out new colours without actually ever finishing up with anything wonderful that I can use at the end of it. But I like to keep that chart as well because it's a good reference to go back to. This particular image has been coloured entirely, obviously with Spectrum Aqua, but by mixing custom colours from lots of different parts of the selection that we've got for you and you can see that it looks a lot more muted than the vibrant tones you might have already seen. So I'm going to show you how to do that. It's more, it's much more easy than you think it might be um, and it's incredibly good fun. So this is what we're going to have a look at. So what I've got here is a piece of acetate on some watercolour cards so I can see the colours that I'm using underneath and then just a bit of watercolour card here so I can show you how you're going to mix your new colours and so you can see the difference. So the first thing we're going to do is look at how to take a colour from being really vibrant but make it a little bit more muted. So I've got a red violet here and I'm just going to get my little brush ready. So I've got water on my brush and as always I take off the excess onto a piece of um, absorbent paper tissue. I'm colouring onto watercolour card so I'm going to put my colour down and then very quickly just move that colour so you can see what it looks like red violet now i am having to work a lot more quickly than you will at home because the bright lights here dry out my ink on the watercolor card much more quickly than it will for you at home so you can see there that is the color of red violet now i want it to be much more muted in tone so what i'm going to do is scribble onto my acetate some of that red violet color you can see there and then i'm going to take the black pen from Essentials, scarily. And I'm going to put a little bit of black ink beside it there. And then what I'm going to do is with my damp brush, I'm going to mix the two together. So I'm going to take the red violet and the black, mix it together on my palette. You can see I've made a little custom palette on that acetate there. And then if I pick that color up with my brush, and go alongside the red violet, you can see that I've got a much more aubergine tone by using that red violet with a little bit of black in it. And you're seeing the difference in the quantity. So you only need a tiny bit of black to make this type of difference. So there we go. That's the red violet with a little bit of black in, and you can see the difference in there, much more muted aubergine tone. But if I wanted to liven that up a little bit, I can actually go back with more of the red violet and mix that back into the custom colour. If I just get a little bit more water there and then I can go back and you can see how I've got somewhere in between these two. So this is the original colour, this is with black in and this one's putting a little bit more red violet in there. So it's muted but not quite as muted. And there are many different variations between those three, lots of different things you can do. Now, not only can you mute tones, as we've done there, and I'll just clean this up because I want to show you another option, but you can mix entirely new colours as well. So if I take Peacock Blue and scribble some of that on the acetate, and then I take my, and actually I'll just show you that colour on here. So there's Peacock Blue. And then if I take some Gold, and put that on my acetate. And I'm kind of going for equal quantities. Um, if you're wondering how I know what an equal quantity is, it's the same width and, and roughly the same depth. That's, that's how I measure my quantity. So you, you'll get the feel for it as you do it. And then I mix these two together. You can see because they're a water-based dye product, those colors mix together effortlessly and I can make a new green color. 
and I'll just show you what the gold was like by popping a little bit of that gold there. So by using that peacock blue and gold, I've been able to mix myself a brand new colour of green, which actually I don't think I have in any of the other pen sets. So that's how easy it is. And you're just going to follow the rule, you know, of the colour wheel. Keep two colours beside each other. Don't go across because if I try and mix now this green colour and that purple that I mixed before, I'm just going to get a horrible muddy brown. So you'll find that with trial and error. And it doesn't matter as long as you're mixing on acetate, trying on a piece of scrap card, you'll see the colour you've got and you'll know whether you're happy with it. So that's how easy it is. To then apply that to an actual image, I'm just going to move these out of the way. And I've got a lovely floral image stamped here. What I'm going to do, oh, I need my acetate back just get my acetate back there we are I'm going to mix myself a custom color for the petals so the colors I used were scarlet and spice and a tiny piece of black okay so to mix my custom color for my petal I'm going to scribble some of my scarlet on here and actually I'm not going to use black I'm going to use burgundy changed my mind it might not look exactly as the example I showed you but I think it'll be nice so I'm using some of my spice on here which is a paley peach color and then I've got a little bit of the burgundy which because it's the same color family as the scarlet that I've used will allow me to um, get a lovely muted tone but might won't be as intense as putting the black in there so to mix my new color I'm just going to work on the petal I'll just move that so you can see it work on this one here so I've just um, damped it down first. Remember, you can do that when you want to get lovely soft diffused effects. And then I'm going to mix my custom colour with the burgundy and the scarlet. And then I'm going to bring that in. And you can see that's a lot more muted. And actually, I want a little bit more burgundy in there. So this is the joy of it, you see. You can just go and mix new colours all the way if it wasn't quite what you wanted. That's more what I wanted. And because I damped it down, I can bring that colour out. Clean my brush. And just softly diffuse that colour out there. And you can see the lovely effect you can get really quickly and easily. And I'm quite happy with that. So I'm going to keep using that one for now. Add it in here. And drag it out. And if you think you haven't quite got it right, you can always go in and blot out and start again. That's the other joy of watercolour. You can correct it. And I want a little bit more burgundy in there. So I can just keep adding a little bit more and mixing my custom palette as I go. Happier with that. Clean my brush. And drag it out if you don't clean your brush you'll just drag the dark color everywhere and actually now I want to add in a little bit more red because I want it to be a little bit more bright and look how I've been able to go straight over the top of that and give it a little bit more vibrancy it really does work incredibly well so I've got my spice now which was the pale peach color because I want these back leaves to be a little bit lighter and then I'm going to mix my custom color by putting a little bit of the scarlet in with the spice and mix my custom colour for the bottom of the leaf there. Uh, petal, beg your pardon, I will keep saying leaf when I mean petal. I'm sure you know what I mean. There we go, we can just keep adding the colour in. And by keep doing that, you can really build up lovely depth and dimension and lovely deep colour. Now what I can do if I want also to really start and build up some shade in there is use directly one of the colours um, that I use to mix my custom palette. So this one's going to be with the scarlet and I can layer it over the top and it won't overtake the colour but because it's one of the colours that I use to mix the custom colour it will keep um, the tone from underneath but just add a little bit more vibrancy in there and that's just by using the pen direct to the card and you can see how easy it is. I love it. Really, it's just about with water with water based products like this, it's just about 
experimenting and having fun and not worrying because it can all be fixed. Because if you want to, you can delete it by just wetting it and blotting it as we've seen happen a little bit earlier there. You can see how I'm really starting to build up that dimension. So you'll continue, that's starting to look beautiful, but you'll keep adding your layers, oh, get it the right way up, you'll keep adding your layers, you'll start to colour the whole image, you'll mix a custom green, a lovely custom orange in the background, and you can see how fabulous that is, but a lot more muted than the colours that come direct from the pen, because I've mixed a custom palette, and I think it looks exceptional, and you're going to have really good fun trying that too. Mm -hmm.